he will talk about, uh, as you see the subject, <coughs> so he will talk about Nobel Prize. Oh, sorry, <laughs> about winner of Nobel Prize and his theory of cyclic cosmology. Uh, uh, there is one problem with Pavel uh, has uh, very bad connection to, to internet and uh, it may happen that this connection will be broken, but we hope not. Um, so please begin. Thank you very much, Jacek. So I should protest. First of all, I am from Poland and not ah, from okay, somewhere. Okay. And, uh, it's true that I might have troubles with the internet, but we hope that I will not have. I will be not talking about Nobel Prize and I will be not talking about everything what Penrose, Roger Penrose did, but I will, uh, the aim of this talk is just to show you simple models that can be made within his conformal cyclic cosmology. So let me start. So what is this conformal cyclic cosmology? So the CCC, that's how Roger abbreviates it, or conformal cyclic cosmology is a proposal for a cosmology hypothesis which answers the question, what was before the Big Bang? So the, I will not be talking why, but I will try to show very quickly pass to how to model this thing, which is called conformal cyclic cosmology. So I very closely follow, at the beginning, I very closely follow the explanation or the proposal for how to make the setting for conformal cyclic cosmology due to Paul Todd. That's the reference here. So let me start. So uh, in this proposal of CCC, the universe consists of eons, maybe they should be spelled differently, uh, and each of these aeon is a time-oriented space-time whose conformal compactification uh, has space-like space scry. It's very important the scry is space-like. So moreover, the Vi tensor on the scry of the four metric is supposed to be zero. So first I should say what CCC is not, what it is not. So, CCC says nothing about this. What is the physics in a given aeon when the physical age of the aeon is normal? And normal here meaning that, aeon, that the aeon is neither too young nor too old. CCC tells instead what is going on when an aeon is either about to die or had just been born. In particular, and CCC says nothing, does not, does not require that the aeons have the same history. It is conformal cyclic cosmology and not conformal <laughs> periodic cosmology, okay? So let's start again. So in this proposal, the universe consists of aeons, each being a time-oriented space-time whose conformal compactification have space-like scry, scries. The vital tensor of the form metric on each scry is zero. Aeons are ordered and the conformal compactifications of consecutive aeons, say the past aeon and the present aeon, are glued together along scry plus of the past aeon and scry minus of the present aeon. The vicinity of the matching surface of the two aeons, they call it want of the universe. So this vicinity, this region, Penrose called bandaged, bandaged region for, two, for the two aeons, is equipped with the following three metrics which are conformally flat at the wand. So there are three metrics. There is a Lorentzian metric, which is regular everywhere in the entire region. There is a Lorenz, another a Lorentzian metric, which represents the physical metric of the present aeon. And this one is singular at the wand. And there's another Lorentzian metric, which represents the physical metric of the past aeon and which infinitely expands at the world, okay? So in the bandage region, the three metrics are conformally related on their overlapping domains. How to make this relation between these three metrics P 
people discuss, but what Roger proposes is the following. So he wants that the metrics are related by a conformal, the same conformal function. Uh, the metric G check is related to metric G, to this regular one by a function omega uh, squared and G hat one over omega squared. And this function omega, which is defined in the vicinity of this, of this, of this wound, should tend to zero at the wound or on the, on the wound. The metric G check in the present eon is a physical metric there. Likewise, the metric G hat in the past eon is a physical metric there. Of course, the metric G hat in the present eon and the metric G check, you know, OK, G check in the present eon and the metric G hat in the past eon as physical spacetime metrics should satisfy Einstein's equations in their spacetime, in their space types. So recapitulating, we have now three, we, we have this, we, what, what, what I want to model today, I want to model the, this bandage region of a passage from the present eon, uh, from the past eon to the present eon. So the past eon is uh, uh, denoted by M, M check and G check and the present eon, no, the, uh, yeah, the other way around. So the past eon is with G hat and the present eon is with the check. Okay. So it looks it looks it looks like this. So what I what I try to model today is is what is on this picture. So in this picture there is there is just like there are, there are just two eons. So the the, the be, be, below the red line here is just the past eon. Above the line is the present eon. And this thing which is dashed here, this thing is just uh, the, this bandage region where the three metrics are present. There is metric the G, G hat here, there is metric the G check here, okay? And the wound is either big bang of the, uh -huh, and, 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 uh, and on, on, this, on this entire region, there is this bandage, on this bandage region, there is this regular metric G, okay? So that's, so I will be talking today essentially about this, this, this region, which is dashed here on this picture. Okay. So a question arises how to make a model of Penrose's bandage region of two eons. So what one needs? One needs a function, omega, vanishing on some space-like hypersurface such that if uh, G check omega squared times G satisfies Einstein equations with some physically reasonable energy momentum tensor, then G hat one over squared G also satisfies Einstein equation with possibly different, but still physically reasonable energy momentum tensor. And you see, if you, so if you have a metric, three metrics, G, G check and G hat, and you are looking for function omega and these three metrics so that this metric satisfies some Einstein equations and this metric satisfies some Einstein equations, it is quite quite rigid problem. It is just like very stringent problem. You, 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 it, 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 you, essentially what you require, you require that you have two metric G check and G hat that are conformally related and then they, that they mm, uh, have, uh, that, that they are also Einstein and they are not isometric. So in, in other words, if you, if, you, if you want to make something like this, you would like to have, you would like to have a conformal class which admits two different Einstein metrics, but Einstein metrics in, in physics sense though. So the Einstein equations is to be set which they should be. So this, this is something very similar to the question that some years ago, Harry Brinkman solved. So Brinkman in 1925 asked a question when in a conformal class of, of metrics, there could be two non-isometric Einstein metrics. And for him, Einstein metrics are those what mathematicians think as Einstein metrics, namely Ricci is proportional to, to the metric. So he asked, what Brinkman asked, 
suppose that we have a conformal class. Is it possible that the conformal class of metrics admits two different Einstein scales? And Brinkman solved this problem, found all such metrics in dimension four, and actually he did it in every signature. And by as a byproduct, in Lorentzian signature, he discovered this, what is now called PP wave. So, so the, 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 the problem in this, in this, in this bandage region is actually more stringent than, than this one of Brinkman, because Brinkman wanted that in a conformal class, there are two metrics, but what I want here, I want more that I want that one metric and the other metric is related by Omega, some, 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 some function Omega. So it is much, so I, I not only need two uh, different Einstein metrics in a conformal class, but I also want that they are very simply related. So if Brinkman solved it in, in dimension four for the pure Einstein case, maybe in this physical Einstein case, also something can be done. So just to get some intuition, let's start with the, with the, is the simplest situation when I just simply assume that the G here, this, this metric G is conformally flat. So everything will be conformally flat. And why not so start with this? And then why not to ask that, for example, this metric uh, satisfies Einstein equations with, with perfect fluid and cosmological constant, for example. So why conformally flat? It's quite reasonable because compatible with the cosmological principle and this what is uh, done by Fla uh, Friedman uh, Lemaitre Robertson Walker uh, uh, models. So let's let's start with this situation. So I will now have I, I start with just for simplicity. I will start with Friedman Lob uh, with Robertson Walker metrics with spatial sections which are which are um, spheres. So these are the closed the closed model. So I will just be having a metric uh, like this, which, which I called that it G test. So it is nothing but the most general Robertson Walker metric with uh, spatial signature, uh, with spatial signature being plus plus plus. And now uh, uh, I just, uh, okay, replace the time by the conformal time. And if I just uh, do it like this, then I see that what stays in here is nothing but the Einstein universe model. So there's so so I will have my, that my metric G test is uh, omega square of eta times Lorentzian metric of Einstein's spherical model or static model. Okay. So if I just parameterize everything like this, uh, it is very nice because then I can integrate to the very end uh, Einstein equations for, uh, for, for, for this metric to have as a source perfect fluid with, and I somehow want that this perfect fluid has polytropic equation of state, which is just uh, such that, that, that the pressure is related to the energy density by, by some constant W. So if I just assume that, that, that this metric satisfies these equations, then <clears throat> with the vector u being uh, like uh, uh, d, d over dt, then, then I find explicitly that this function omega is either like this when w, when this w here is not equal to minus one third, or it is given by this. So now, so that's, that's the first thing which is well known, but I just repeated that if you just take the ansatz for Friedman uh, uh, Lemaitre Robertson Walker with uh, spatial sections, uh, with spatial sections being spheres, and if I put it in this conformal time, then the equation, the, the polytropic equation of state for the energy momentum tensor uh, for the Einstein equations can be integrated explicitly in terms of this function omega, and here is the here the formula for this omega. So, if you just so now we go. May I ask a question? 
So uh, in this case, you uh, you assume that the uh, conformal factor is uh, just the scale factor, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I, I did no. So far, I didn't assume anything. I just said that I I, I take this this information which is on this page from some textbook. It is something well known. Okay. But now I'm passing back to 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 to, to Penrose to, to to this to this bandage region. So now I go back to the Penrose's or Todd's bandage triple, which is G G hat and G hat should be and G check. So I take as G the this Einstein metric, so the, the 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 Einstein universe metric. So I take as G as my G this G Einstein, this thing here. I take as G check my metric G test. This one that I know that it solves that it solves uh, this perfect fluid equation of says by these functions omega here, right? And now I. I apply this what, what 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 Penrose wants that I want that the metric G hat is given by the same Einstein with the same omega but now omega omega to the minus one, and now of course I see that 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 because of my form of my omega of eta that is like that it looks like this so it has this parameter w here but it see it it it, it, it obviously if if I just uh, replaced this uh, omega uh, by minus one over omega, then this function will be given essentially by the same thing, but only what will change that is this w will go to w bar with minus here, or what you, you will see is that w bar, so it's essentially this will be also solution to Einstein equations is perfect fluid, but now and with polytropic of equation of state, but now is W check equal minus ter, minus two thirds of W. So as a consequence, this one also satisfies Einstein equations is perfect fluid, but now but now is with with W check hat replaced by this W that I have initialed, right? So now <laughs> I have the following theorem that if omega is such that this satisfies Einstein equations with zero cosmological constant and with the energy momentum tensor T check of a perfect fluid whose, a pre whose pressure is proportional to the energy density via this equation of state, then this guy also satisfies Einstein equations, uh, also with lambda equals zero and with the energy momentum tensor T, T hat of perfect fluid but now whose pressure is related to the energy density by this W thing like this. So if I just look at Ricci's colors of uh, corresponding metrics, then I will see that it's actually this Ricci's color at T equals zero is positive if this W check is between minus one and one third. This is this minus one comes here from this uh, thing that I also want that my uh, fluids will uh, will uh, will uh, satisfy strong or dominant energy conditions. So, so somehow the story is as follows. So now I propose the following model for this for this for this bandage region of this conformally flat perfect fluids. I have I have here G, G check with G Einstein and omega and with polytropic equation of state of my perfect fluid with, uh, with, with this constant W check. And here I have again perfect fluid with W hat, which is related by this relation, right? So here is, here is my, 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 my universe after bank, here is, my, here is my aeon after bank, here is my aeon before bank. And what's going on is that I have a perfect fluid here with some W hat and after the bank by this reciprocal hypothesis that I should change conformal factors to one minus one over uh, itself, then I will get again perfect fluid. But this perfect fluid will be just like transmuting. So you see what's, what's going on here. So, so you can, you, 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 the, 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 the transformation is just like of interval mi minus one to one third to minus one, one third. And now, we actually have this, this transformation of these perfect fluids some time ago with Krzysiek Meissner, 
but we were assuming analyticity of solution. And so here we have this sign to some power and there are square roots and the solution, these solutions are not real uh, uh, analytic, but if the solution is real analytic, then we discovered with Krzysztof Meissner that actually the only possibilities for this perfect fluid to transmute is are either being on at this point or at this point or at this point or at this point or at this point. And this point corresponds to passage between minus one to one third. So it is that, that on one side, for example, so the, the, this point corresponds to this, that uh, in the past aeon, we have, we have a cosmological constant. So it is just asymptotically the, the Sitter universe. And on the other side, there is just incoherent radiation with uh, pressure equal um, uh, to one third of energy density. The other one is, for example, where 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 where, where in the where one of the w's is zero. So if one of the w is zero, the other is uh, uh, minus two third, and this corresponds to the passage between matter and something which even is known in cosmology. I I, I, I looked in the book, and this thing with minus two third is called gas of domain walls. I have no idea what it, it could be, and there is another one which is quite nice which is just this minus one third, because minus one third is just like, a, like a, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, fixed point of this transformation. So actually minus one third guys pass from one eon to the other eon without, without any trouble. And these guys are also known in, in cosmology they are called gas of strings. Okay. So that's that's what 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 it is. So this this generalization of this thing that we made some time ago with Krzysztof Meissner, and we were showing that only some uh, only given given a perfect fluid of let's say minus two third W, we get on the other side perfect fluid with zero W. But we had only this three this one two three four points on this line because we were we have had, we are we, we 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 try to look at analytic solutions and then from this analytic this assumption it turned out that this one third multiples of of uh, integers uh, were only possible but actually you can solve this explicitly using this uh, cosmological time and then you see that there is entire line of these transmutations between the perfect fluids if there is no cosmological constant okay okay so uh, that's 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 the first thing i wanted to show you that's the first very stupid and very simple model that we have here so since 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 i just say that there is no cosmological constant but here i said that there is a cosmological constant so there is some some problem here because this cos cosmological constant can be understood in terms of perfect fluid when when the perfect fluid is just equal the the the, the, the this w is equal to minus one so somehow this point at the end of this story is not so good especially especially that for for for, for at, at this point the scalar curvature at the at the wound is zero and it is not so good because if scalar curvature at the wound is zero then hmm then that is bad. Okay, so so let me let let me come back to the more general situation that like switch switch on the cosmological constant. So we are now coming back to the Friedman uh, Lemaitre Robertson Walker metric. In the usual coordinates, I still strict to this spatial part to be a sphere. So now I write it. I, I will be working now in the usual time, just to uh, just to so. For this, I pull out this factor omega out of this, just to show you that this thing actually is again Einstein universe metric, because if we just change this, that's an Einstein universe metric. So now I take as g hat omega square now of t, in, uh, so I will be working in, 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 in terms of t variable, and I will just take this g, g check as this. Now, I want that this thing satisfies perfect fluid Einstein equations with this equation of state uh, and a cosmological constant lambda check in the check region, right? So if I just write this, this Einstein equations, which are, they, they look like this. So there's one ODE 
that this function omega should satisfy the second order OD, which looks like this. But now I want also that this thing satisfies Einstein equations with perfect fluid. Now, again, with this, now I don't assume anything about it. I simply want that now I have the, in here I have this perfect fluid with the same function. So there will be similar equation for one over omega and this system is very stringent. So if it, this system, because if I want, if I want that W check and W hat is constant, then this system for this, these two second order ODEs for omega are that, that string, stringent that you very quickly find integrability conditions. And these integrability conditions are quite, quite fun because they are just, this is only possible that this metric and this metric satisfies the Einstein equations with perfect fluid like this and perfect fluid like this, if the following algebraic relation for lambdas and these Ws are satisfied. Okay, so we had the situation that when both lambdas, both lambdas were zero and then I can solve everything and that's what I was before. But now I can, now, so there, there could be a situation that one lambda is zero, the other is non-zero. Uh, let's skip it. The, but so now I assume that both lambdas are zero and I just will be not talking about this case where W is co corresponding to cosmological constant because it, it's again the same. So I will be only considering this case when, 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 when the uh, W here is equal one third. So when I, have, when I have radiation in the check region, right? So if... Uh, So if I just take this case of these integrability conditions, that's what I see very quickly is that on the other side, so if both lambdas are non-zero, on the other side, W hat again must be one third. So there should be again radiation. And in such case, I can explicitly, explicitly solve uh, uh, this uh, second order ODE for this function omega, and that's the solution. And this omega has the property that both G check and G hat satisfies Einstein equations with polytropic perfect fluid equation of states for which on both sides we have radiation. So colloquially speaking, incoherent radiation passes happily through the wand if the cosmological constants are non-zero, but the constants can change. You see that the, the solution is such that, that on both sides could be different cosmological constants. Okay. So this was very, everything was very simple here. So let me pass now to possible generalization of this story. So why I now passing to this generalization? Because in, 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 his, in, 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 in uh, this proposal for cosmo, uh, conformal cyclic cosmology, apart from making this proposal, Roger, Penrose uh, have predictions. How can we check? He says how, that, that, that there should be there should be possibility of checking uh, if his proposal is true. And one scenario for checking he describes is as follows: that you think that in the previous aeon, at the end of the of the of the evolution, what's, what, what's only, what is only remaining is just a spherical gravitational wave. So assume that everything died and what's only left there is a spherical gravitational wave. He attributes this spherical gravitational wave to collision of huge, huge galaxies at the very late stage of, 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 of existence of, of, of the previous aeon. So if there was if there was this this gravitational spherical gravitational wave there, so my question is: suppose that I have the Wait, previous. What about the Birkhoff theorem? Wait. We we come back to big yes I, we we come back to this okay. Uh, I yes so I of course for me gravitational wave is just this thing I, I just. I, I didn't put the setting yet. I'm just like motivating what I'm going to do, okay? So I, so suppose that there is just this spherical thing going there and 
the question is what's going on with we, with this when it passes to when it passes to the to the, to the next L. So what I be doing now, I will consider two consecutive eons, um, check an um, hat, uh, and study how the matter content of the past eon determines the matter content of the pre present eon by means of the reciproc reciprocity hypothesis. So I assume that the only matter content in the final stages of the past eon is a spherical wave described by Einstein equations with pure radiation energy momentum tensor. So I have Einstein equations with the energy momentum tensor uh, being of pure radiation with K being null. And the Einstein equations on the left-hand side, there is a cosmological constant lambda check. So I will try to solve these equations solve the equations for this in some very strange way, meaning trying to evolve the conformal data from the want back in time. And this is done by uh, looking for a metric G check of the form like this, where H or T, and this kind of metric is a Lorentzian analog of the Poincare Einstein metric known from the theory of conformal invariance. So then I want that this metric uh, solves Einstein equations with cosmological constant and with this energy momentum tensor. And the solution is obtained under the assumption that the three dimensional conformal structure on this T equals zero surface uh, is simply flat. It's just three dimensional flat metric. And I assume that the metric G check, this one, admits a power series expansion in time variable t and is such that h, this h of zero, precisely reduces to the flat metric on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the t equals zero surface. So one can solve this thing to the very end and this solution depends on precisely one real arbitrary function of uh, one variable, right? So now, so so I, I first describe what I do, then I show you how I do it. So I just have a flat conformal metric on t equals zero surface. Then I extend it to this matrix, and I want that this matrix satisfy Einstein equation with cosmological constant and this kind of energy momentum tensor. And now I'm applying this re reciprocal hypothesis that I'm just looking for a metric g hat, which is t, t to the power four of the check. So the, the, I, I simply take this thing as a, a conformal factor and this thing as the, which is again, flat Lorentzian metric as uh, when t x equals zero. So I, 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 I consider this thing as a conformal scale. And now I apply this reciprocal thing that I define this g, 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 g hat. And then what is, what is, and now I have nothing to do because now I have this metric defined because I've, the, the, previous was, the, the previous was actually totally determined modulo this one function, one function, one free function. And now I just, I have this other metric obtained by this reciprocal hypothesis. And the only thing I can do, I can just check what energy momentum tensor this has. So now I, 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 I show that this new aeon created from the one containing a single spherical wave is filled at its initial state with three types of radiation. Aha, I know what you were meaning. Spherical means uh, spherical in, in terms of topology, not, not in terms of some, okay, doesn't matter. Uh, state with the three types of radiation. So on the other side, it turns out that there are three time, types of radiation. Uh, first, there is this damped spherical wave which was on the other side, so it simply passes through the through the through the through the through the wand. This, but it will be a bit damped. What is a bit more surprising to me is that at this at this at this wand, because it just hits the thing, there will be also this this, this there will be part of this outgoing wave which which starts to focus now. So there is there will be another ingredient of the spherical wave just going going to focus. And as the third 
part of energy momentum tensor which I find is there is still randomly scattered waves uh, that could be interpreted as perfect fluid with energy density of um, such that p is equal one third to rho. So, in other words, the metric this the metric g g g hat satisfies Einstein equations without cosmological constant with perfect flow with energy momentum tensor like pure radiation along vector k and is the same vector that was the, 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 the prolongation of the vector from the from the past on there is vector l which is such that it is also null but and such that it is just orthogonal okay minus two to, 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 to this to this to this k and there is piece of perfect fluid which very close to the want is simply such that p is equal one third of rho. So it is how this wave from this other side becomes a wave here that is just damped wave, there is just focusing wave, and there is scattered radiation obtained as the result of this of this of this uh, collision with 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 the big bang, right? So let me let me let me show you how do it how I do it in 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 details. So I start with um, uh, this conformal class represented by by the flat metric. So here is the flat metric, three dimensional flat metric. Then I make Quankere ansatz for this metric a, for this one parameter family of this metric say t. And I for simplicity I assume that this that these guys only depend on r and t and not on z. And uh, I, of course, I want that 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 uh, mu at zero and mu of zero is zero. So therefore, this is really uh, reduces to this metric at t equals zero. And now I assume that everything is everything is uh, uh, everything is uh, uh, um, uh, real analytic in the variable t, and I put the Einstein equations for this metric such that the energy momentum tensor is having this pure radiation along vector k, which is given by this formula, right? So this vector k is tangent to a congruence of null geodesic without shear and twist, which represents light rays emanating from the source at the surface are equal zero. I require that this Poincaré metric satisfies these equations. So there is cosmological constant here and this part coming from energy momentum tensor. And then if I just, I have the following. So this metric uh, satisfies Einstein equations. If this metric satisfies the Einstein equations, so you see, I have this infinite sum here of, of this. So I, the, the question is how to find these coefficients A and B, these functional coefficients here. So then Einstein equations of that form, uh, if I assume that I have the Einstein equations of that form, then I have the following. The first two coefficients of A and B are zero. So the power series start from T to the power third. So the, this metric H of T starts like this. If I assume this analyticity, I definitely, uh, so I am obliged to start my, 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 my power series at the power three. And the rest, the rest of these i's, a's, and b's are absolutely determined in terms of a one free function. More precisely, the Einstein equations, uh, if I solve Einstein equations, as I wrote before, up to an order k in t, then these functions nu and mu are if I, if I assume that these Einstein equations up to this order, up to order k are satisfied, and if I choose an arbitrary differentiable function f, then it, this uniquely determines these uh, uh, coefficients nu and mu up to an order k plus two, okay? Uh, in the lowest order, the solution looks like this. The energy function in this lower order uh, looks like this. So that's the energy of this, of this, of this, of this, uh, spherical wave and the lambda is simply constant. 
and the Y tensor is not zero, but at the T equals zero surface, it is zero. So everything is as I wanted. So I somehow found a solution of Einstein equations. If I wanted to, as I say, the solution is determined, so I can go as far as I can. I just show you how it looks up to order eight, just to show you that it's quite non-trivial because this function appears in horrible way. These, these co coefficients are, are horrible when you just make this expansion, but there is no problem of making this expansion. If you have good computer, you can make this expansion as far as you want. This, this function f determines everything. And so that's, that's, that's how this function looks like. And then if you look at the energy density of this, of this spherical wave in the expansion of, in terms of t, so it starts at t to the power six, right? And uh, uh, yeah, so here is the vial tensor. Uh, so remember t equals zero is just the, the want. And now I want that, uh, that, the, that the, my radiation in the, in, the, in the previous aeon has positive uh, energy. So I have to choose this function f so that f prime is greater than zero everywhere. Okay, so now I apply for this. Uh -huh, so maybe that's the, the summary of this story. The Poincaré type metric G can be interpreted as the ending stage of the evolution of the past aeon in Pendrel of the CCC. The aeon has a positive cosmological constant, which is, and it is filled with a spherical asymmetric pure radiation moving along the null congruence generated by the vector field K. So that's, that's the first part of this thing. Now I apply the reciprocity hypothesis. So now I have nothing to do, but just looking at the metric with Instead of t to the minus one here, I put t. And now I just now assume that this thing, that, that this thing comes from uh, the metric G check, which had this equation satisfied. So these guys, these guys, or these guys are already those that, that I determined before. And then I look at the at the Einstein at, at, the, at the Einstein tensor of this, and then I realize that the Einstein tensor looks essentially uh, uh, like uh, this, right? So the, the essentially the Ricci tensor, the Ricci, just forget about this, the Ricci tensor is equal to everything which is here with, with some functions uh, phi hat, psi hat, rho hat, p hat, right? And here this uh, vector k and l are the null, null vectors, uh, so one, this is this is the continuation of the k from the previous aeon. This is uh, this is it has minus here, so it is just the guy going in the uh, opposite direction. So it is just like this l corresponds to I don't know it it should be called ingoing wave. So this outgoing wave, this ingoing wave. So that's how energy momentum tensor looks after the bank. Okay, and and this u here, this 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 thing is just this, again, this cosmological U. Remember now, so I made my, 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 my time uh, counting stupidly made because this what is below, times go from zero and it is positive when going down and when going up from zero is negative. So somehow T is negative in the region G, G, G hat, okay. So here, I just, for solutions uh, which I had before, if they are just determined up to the order, remember k plus two, then these guys are determined up to order k minus three. And the energy, uh, moment, uh, en ener uh, energy density of, uh, of the passing wave looks like this. Energy density of the this focusing wave looks like this. It, it gets somehow uh, at the main term. It just gets gets uh, divided by half essentially. Uh, not really because already here is not. But it 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 it, it how it, it divides. You, you you may say oh whoa, whoa, but you are looking around zero. But there is t to the minus one third. Of course because we are after the bank. So after the bank the, the, the this this thing suffers of the big bank. So the, it is why I have singularities here, but the leading terms 
are this one here and this one here. And uh, since T is negative, so this is positive. So F must be positive for this to have, uh, to have uh, energy density greater than zero, at least at the leading terms. And then if you just look at rho and P, which, 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 which you find here in this, if you just calculate this, this Einstein tensor, you will, you will, you will see what is this rho and P. Uh, and then it, it's, it's quite interesting because if you just look, it has, it has the leading term like that and like that. And these and this are related by factor of three. And again, there is another singular term and this and this is again related by the factor of three. Farther, it's different, but the, 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 the leading terms here, so the cl close to t equals zero surface, uh, p is really one third of rho in this scattered way. So in these formulas, all the dotted terms are explicitly determined in terms of f and its derivative. And as you see, I was lazy and typed only the terms adapted to the choice of k equals six. I can do it as far as you want, but the bigger computer is. No, not even the bigger computer, really patient in typing. I think that I have it to something like, I, I was checking it till order 15, maybe. Okay, so that I'm, I'm concluding. Uh, so as already said, we need, I said that there is arbitrary function in this process, but this function should be uh, first positive as a function of R to have a uh, positive energy of, of this wave before, and its first derivative should be positive to have positive energy in after. And that's, that's enough. Uh, and as I said, remarkably, the, the scattered thing after the bank, close to the bank behaves like radiation. Uh, this means that immediately after the bank, apart from the matter content of the two spherical ingoing and outgoing wave in the new aeon, there is also a scattered radiation there, okay? So this solution uh, to the three matrix in penrose stotes bandage region has the following appealing physical property. Immediately after the bank, the spherical wave from the previous aeon not only produces two spherical waves, one is obvious, it is the still expanding but damped wave that survived the bank. The other is less obvious because although it is, because this other one, uh, although it is still spherical, it focuses, but there is also the third one, the third ingredient of this, of this new aeon, and it is a randomly scattered radiation described by the perfect fluid with P equal to one third of rho. So what the Penrose's scenario does to the new ion out of a single spherical way in the past ion is that it splits this wave into three portions of radiations, the two spherical waves, and in addition, a lump of scattered radiation described by the statistical physics. So if you, I, I, I put few, 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 few references here. The, the, it's really beautiful paper of Brinkman and his discovery of, of these PP waves. Everybody should, everybody who, who, who is interested in relativity should once read this paper. I, I, it is in any signature and it's really beautiful paper. The, 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 the formulation that I was closely following is due to Paul Todd. It is in these two papers. Uh, actually, Paul, I think that he already finished the book at the time that it was 2008. He was preparing his book about these conformal methods in, in cosmology. And there is, there is his lecture that he was giving here in Warsaw at a meeting on Lorentz geometry. So if you, he was distributing copy of this thing to the participants, but if you want, you can just ask him or buy, buy a book. I, I also mentioned my paper with, with Krzysiek Meissner, where we, first observed that there is this transform transmutations of perfect fluids, this discrete transmutation of perfect fluids with this, with this W being multiples on one third when we assumed as analyticity. And now I just like, uh, I, I just generalized this result because it actually there is nothing mysterious here about 
this discret discreteness. Discreteness was just caused by assuming analyticity. And I think that I will just, uh, I, I essentially finished writing this thing, the, this last thing. So it should be available soon. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so there is time for questions. Just a easy question about convergence of the formulas. So you you have some something about that? <laughs> Very good question. I, no, no, I no, don't. No. I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't. I, it is why I was at a certain moment. I was very, I was very careful, and I said that I said this thing in this first theorem that I can, so, if I solve it to to an order that I can solve it order by order, and if I solve the equation to this order, then the functions are given to that order. What about convergence? I don't know. In the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the case when in the case when the when the when the Einstein equations are just this is what mathematicians think as Einstein. So when the Ricci tensor is just proportional to the metric, there is uniqueness theorem that if it is analytic and if, if the dimension of the conformal, um, conformal class to which I do this Poincaré-Einstein uh, uh, development uh, is analytic, then uh, the solution is unique. Uh -huh. But it is uh, it, it, these are the uh, this, the Einstein equations Ricci equal to lambda times g are very strong. Here I have much weaker equations, so yeah. I, I I neither have a unique have uniqueness because I have just shown I, I made an answer for this Poincaré Einstein thing, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. and 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 on top of this I had a free function f. Yeah, I have yeah, not, yeah. no uniqueness, and I don't know anything about con convergence. Okay. Okay. Uh, a question? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I have a question, uh, Marek Bisiada. Uh, okay. What are, in your opinion, obstacles to do the similar thing for the specially flat uh, metric? And uh, the, do you feel that the conclusions would be uh, qualitatively the same concerning, I mean, the, the changing the ions? I don't know because you you, you see, the, the, there is there is very little. The, the thing is not so rigid because you have, what, 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 I, as I said, I I I followed a scheme of Paul Todd when he proposed for the evolution of, of the of the metric in the in the past eon to take this Poincaré Einstein expansion right. And then, if you take this Poincaré Einstein expansion because of the of your of your of your of your of your of your construction, you have a distinguished scale which is just this t variable which which stays in the denominator of Poincaré Einstein equation, and you take this as omega. But there are plenty of ways of just extracting omega from a given metric, and it is it is matter of I don't know how to how to say which omega should be taken in a given conformal class to consider one right. over omega as the metric for the another, 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 another eon, right? So it is, the, the thing is not very rigid. It is, for example, why Paul proposes that, uh, that, that a part of the game is to use this Poincaré-Einstein expansion. Okay, thank you. And uh, it is uh, just to be sure that uh, invoking the geometric instead of uh, g hat and uh, g check uh, is just an auxiliary construction right or is it important by itself the physical metrics are only the g check and g hat and they are related by yes. by some conformal factor yeah, that's yeah, the yeah, only yeah. thing you have yeah, but, 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 somehow, okay, you, but 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 what 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 what, what, what uh, as far as i understand what was the problem of these people is can we get any kind of uniqueness having a metric in the previous aeon at least at the vicinity of the of, of, it, of the ends of the end of its life how to determine metric in the mm -hmm. in the in the in the new aeon and that's the problem and various people that's what i said at the very beginning of my of my of my thing how to relate these three metrics is debatable paul todd and roger penrose produce this scheme that 
Yes, yes, but let me understand it better. The, so, I mean, uh, the real physical issue is how to relate conformally G hat and G check, right? Yes. And and the invocation of the G metric is an auxiliary uh, construction. I mean, pinpointing the yes, G but, but, should but, but, but be Einstein metric, this, Einstein metric, right? But, yes, but you would like what, what you would like to have, and it is why they choose this G because it, it is it is crucial for this thing. That, there's, that in the conformal class, that the conformal class should be non-singular, meaning that in the conformal class there should be there should be metric this regular everywhere. Mm, it should okay. be regular everywhere and such that is conformally flat at the at the, the t equals zero constant or at the at the one, you know. Okay, okay. So, so this, this conformal flat yes, yes, okay, okay. Thank you. You make the Yes. Uh, do you Pavel, do you use uh, uh, the the vial tensor and its expansion on the on the scry, the electric part of the vial tensor, the magnetic no, part. No, no. I just I just I just did what I did, and then I calculated the vial tensor. Right. Uh, right. So so I'm I'm asking about this. So I I, I can even show you this. I, I show you how the vial tensor looks because it looks the same in both metrics. It's here, right? Mm -hmm. It's just just think here. So here is just the C is just made of one and zero. So it's really everything like up to this order is just given one is, is given in terms of one component which vanishes at t equals zero yeah and the reason i'm asking is that there is this uh, a formulation by friedrich of initial data on scry in terms of induced metric and in terms of of the vial tensor this is not the vial tensor itself this is rescaled vial tensor and i think it's only the mm, electric part so is this formulation of Friedrich any useful here or not at all? You know, I am a person that I don't know anything. So I just, I, I don't know. I, I knew that Friedrich was doing conformally, conformal evolution of, of, of data in three dimensions. And actually I know that he was doing it from, 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 from space like hypersurfaces. Uh, Paul Todd calls this expansion that he uses Starobinsky expansion. He attributes it to Starobinsky, not to Friedrich. I don't know, but I, I, I realize that what they are doing is nothing but the Poincaré Einstein expansion, which is known from conformal geometry. Yes, yeah, so, so I guess that if you have a specific answers for, for a, a space time metric before the Eon and after the Eon, you don't need to really know this initial value formulation because you have explicit uh, all all your data is explicit so yeah. you just you just fix you just have to match the the, the coefficients uh, etc but but more uh, theoretically in principle one could refer to this friedrich's initial data because then it gives you existence although i'm not sure how it works yeah i, I think bank. i think Aha, so he, you, you, you mean that he has proven convergence of this, of this series? Yes, so, so at that least for, for, the, for, for the usual traditional case without Eon, when we just have one space time, then there is a formulation. So if we have space time with cosmological constant and, and, and there is future scry, Friedrich defines a data on this scry, which uniquely determines solution to Einstein equations in, in uh, well, near, near this cry. So, so this is similar uh, Cauchy problem as on Cauchy surface, which is, uh, which is a re re real Cauchy surface in space time. So you can also consider the, the cry as a Cauchy surface. Mm. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. So I, I think that Paul taught I, I'm saying that I closely following Paul Todd, but you know, I, I, let me be let, let me be honest. I never read anything. I just heard what Paul, Paul Todd was saying. But his paper starts with reference to Friedrich. That, that's 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 true. Other questions? Thanks. So I uh, I have a question. Yes, yeah, sir. Can I have a question yes, before? Uh, somehow. You, you, you manage to avoid dealing with gravitation singularities. Uh, am I right? Say it again. Uh, you, you don't worry about gravitation singularities. You're, you're having it, say, Friedman, but somehow you avoid, you know, uh, singularities. 
Uh, is that I mean, the, the, singular, the singularity of everything is only in, in this at t equals zero, and it's only in this function omega. So yes, so it, is why, it, is why, it is why I need this metric G, or not me, they need this metric G, which is everywhere regular. So the, 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 really thing, the, the real thing that glues everything is just this, conf, this, this regular metric G on this on this on this on this um, uh, on this bandage region so that's that's this regular metric g gives you a conformal class within this conformal class below there is this metric g hat above there is this metric g check and and they are singular as metrics they are singular but they but 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 choosing a scale in a conformal class is just choosing singularity in Riemannian geometry. It is just wrong choice of coordinates. So the 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 the, the conformal geometry of this of these eons at the Banach region is perfectly regular. The, what is what is what is what, what is the singularity here is interpreted only when you want to work in terms of a of the of, of a physical metric and then the physical metric is this what physicists should be carrying off and is why why you 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 are worried and this metric is singular the metric g g g, g check is singular at the bank and the metric g g g hat is 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 expanding infinitely at the bank but but as a conformal thing it's just perfect geometry it is even conformally flat at the at the at the this the, at least this what I produce. Uh, this is three dimensional conformally flat geometry on the on the on the on the surface, and it is conformally flat. This metric G is conformally flat at the wand, and that's the requirement of the theory. They want that the conformal class that is in the bandage region is conformally flat. At the wall, but otherwise it's regular conformal metric, conformal structure. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes. I have a question, uh, Pavel. What is the uh, meaning of this function f? Do you have some interpretation? Ah, uh, this function. Uh, yes, I think that I I have. So it, this. Okay, I said that I don't read anything, but I think that I that did read something about this. This uh, uh, this Starobinsky and also Friedrich or really Poincaré Einstein uh, approach to development of conformal class. The thing is that uh, if you start with a conformal geometry in let's say in odd dimension, then you can there there are two ways of making. Uh, conformal invariance, but by referring to pseudo-Riemannian metric, one metrics. One 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 approach is this of Pfefferman Graham, which is producing an ambient metric associated to this conformal class, and this ambient metric is defined in dimension uh, n plus two. And the other one is Poincaré 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 Einstein. So the original Pfefferman Graham approach to conformal invariance was to pr produce this Pfefferman Graham metrics. And then there, forgetting uniqueness, they assume that these Pfefferman Graham metrics have an analytic exp expansion in terms of analytic powers of some variable, right? Uh, of some of, uh, integer powers of some variables. Then it turns out that passing from Pfefferman Graham construction, it turns out that Pfefferman Graham construction is essentially the same as Poincare Einstein con construction, although Poincare Einstein is in one dimension lower. And when you you can simply get in Pfefferman Graham metric for conformal class, you can get Poincare Einstein metric for the conformal class, which is in dimension n plus one. So it is like in our case. The thing is that passage passage from 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 from, uh, from uh, Pfefferman Graham to Poincare Einstein is such that the variable in which there was expansion uh, is just Square root of the other. So when you go to the square root, in what you what you what you get in the when you assume that in the Pfefferman, uh, in the Poincaré Einstein expansion that you have analytic only analytic powers on, only integer powers, then it means that in 
Pfefferman Graham, you have you have only you have only you have only you, you, you have more than integer powers, but also one half integer powers. So Pfefferman Graham assumes that there are no one half integer powers. So when you pass to uh, Poincare Einstein metric, you will have only powers in the expansion which are now even, even powers. If you want to have odd powers as I want, there is no uniqueness for this. And it is where this function f appears as this remnant of not uniqueness of a non and real analytic Pfefferman Graham matrix. Well, cool. Cool. did I explain it or? <laughs> but this is a, I would say a technical, mathematical. Yeah, but that's, that's, what, that's what they have proven. So they were able to prove uh, uniqueness, I mean, Pfefferman Graham, assuming analyticity of their expansion. Analyticity of their expansion means the, the only, uh, uh, only, um, even powers in the Poincaré Einstein expansion, but I have here both powers, so it is why I don't have uniqueness. You know, I ask you about interpretation of f because if you have freedom of one function of one variable, it would be in standard cosmology you have freedom of the equation of state, yeah? and due to this freedom you can uh, say uh, make a history of our universe using different types of matters, particles, and so on. Here, you don't have this possibility. You no, what, 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 what this fun okay, if you want a physical interpretation of this function f, it is, of course, space modulation of my, of my wave. My wave, uh, the, 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 sh the shape of the wave in the radial direction is free. That's what it's physical, physical okay. it means. But you know, if you would have a freedom of equation of state, it will it could be better because you could construct uh, I don't know adapt the equation of state to the history of the present universe. The new yes, that's yeah. But 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 my my goal was opposite. My goal was make everything as rigid as possible, and that was the goal of Paul Todd. They want to know how eon here produces the eon there. They, it is why they want to restrict maximally the freedom. If I just, uh, of course, if I left, if I left uh, equation of states undetermined, there will be a lot of free. I can do whatever, really. Okay, more questions? Okay, there's no questions. Uh, thank you again.